Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am super excited to have this conversation because we are beginning our journey to shifting to the last two energy types in human design. We are with Anna, who is a projector. And as we're going to dive into projectors and reflectors, which are the last two energy types we're going to discuss, they are what they have like a non energy type. Um, so they're pretty different than manifestors, manifesting generators, and generators. I love seeing the differences in like personalities and how you walk through the world. So projectors are only 21% of the population, fun fact. Um, so we're going to dive into a lot of conditioning that, that projectors go through because manifestors, manifesting generators, they make up like 70% of the, of the population. So we're going to dive into that today um, and also what it looks like to walk through the world as a projector. So Thank you so much for coming, Anna. Anna and I met also in this Align experience with Emma, who has been a guest on this uh, pod podcast, I guess you can call it. And I'll link her video here if you're interested. But Anna and I met, I guess, a year ago or so now. That's so crazy. To think <laughs> I know, right? So Thank you for coming. I would love Ooh. to give just a brief introduction of yourself, whatever you feel like sharing, and then we'll hop into the conversation. Okay. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Anna. Um, I guess you could call me kind of like a spiritual guide. Mm -hmm. Not exactly sure. I just share what feels good for me, what sparks interest in me. And, you know, I'm just here to figure out life, just like <laughs> anybody else, figure out how to go through life and our journey with as much ease and fulfillment and joy as possible. So mm, I love that. I yeah. love that you're like, I'm just here to share because like even that, is such a um, projector thing. Like projectors mm -hmm. are are created to be the leaders and the guides of this world. Um, so the fact that you're like, I guess I'm just a guide. I don't know. I, I'm, but like to me, I'm hearing like I'm just being me. Like, I'm yeah. just trying to share <laughs> me. So I love yes. that you're describing yourself that way. <laughs> yeah, it's helped me a lot. Um... Because that's just kind of how I've always gone about it. I've just wanted to like share what feels good for me. I never wanted to have like a niche or like have a specific title. I just wanted to share what interested me at the time. And then figuring out that projectors are literally just meant to guide and to improve and to see the little things just... Mm -hmm kind of gave me the confirmation that I needed to kind of just follow that spark inside me. Yeah. Yeah. So let's dive into that. Like, let's kind of dive a little bit deeper. What is your journey with human design? When did you start learning about human design and um, what kind of intrigued you when you started this, this journey of human design? Well, um, I had no idea what human design was until our Align experience. Oh. And yeah, so learning about that and Align was probably like, that was like my biggest tool, I feel like, because even though like, I don't think I do a very bad job of guilting myself or shaming myself for going towards the things that spark my interest mm. but I always kind of felt like like why can't I just pick one thing mm -hmm. um like the way I viewed things was different from everybody else so I always kind of was distant I didn't want to like give my opinion or give my thoughts or my viewpoints and then as a projector, I learned that I am literally meant to see things differently and I am meant to like 
you know, tell people, hey, like, what? A, why not try this way? Or like, if they ask, give them my opinion and my viewpoint and kind of guide people to a new perspective or a new mm. way to do things. And it just kind of gave me a lot of confidence in that. So mm -hmm. I feel like the biggest thing for me was one, learning that we are meant to be guides. We're meant to see the world differently. We're meant to see structure differently. We're meant to improve. And then another one was like my emotional authority. I am like a deeply emotional person and I feel like I've always been taught to not listen to that, to mm -hmm. not let my emotions get the best of me and to not really listen to them. And even though I didn't really do that in the first place, I always wanted to listen to my heart. Mm -hmm. Now I'm able to like sit with myself and ask myself like, does this feel good for me? And to use that in like my everyday life mm -hmm. instead of trying to like force myself to do something or to force an answer out of myself right away to like sit with my body, even if it's just a minute, a couple minutes mm -hmm. to just sit with myself and know that like, oh, if it's a good feeling, that's a yes. If it's like a bad feeling or nothing, it's a no. Mm -hmm. um or nothing is like okay now is not the time like mm -hmm. to be able to just listen to my body and know that it's telling me and guiding me in the right direction yeah there's so much that you said there I want to give a little breakdown of projectors for those of us that are like brand new and we just need a recap or maybe you're clicking on this video and, and you don't know maybe some of the highlights of projectors. So, and you interwove all of these points in what you were saying. So I want to almost like rewind and hear what you just said again. But um, so projectors are, they are a non-energy type, which means they don't have on the human design chart, they don't have their sacral center defined. So the sacral center is kind of the will center, the willpower um, manifesting generators and generators are very much the doers of the world. Projectors are the guides. They're that like, you use the word new perspectives and my, I don't think my partner watches my YouTube videos <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but I'm going to call him out and hopefully he's okay with this. His business name is literally new perspectives and he's a projector. Oh, and I when I that. made that connection, I was like, holy shit, like he doesn't even realize this, but like that's, but yeah. he was like, that's how I feel. I want, he's a therapist. That's how I feel. I want my therapy business to be is to introduce people to new perspectives in life. And that is literally what projectors are on this earth to do. And I love that you interwove. Um, if I'm asked to give my opinion, because the, um, what is that called? the authority, strategy. the strategy. Thank you. The strategy mm -hmm. projectors is to wait for an invitation. And that doesn't mean that we're like sitting here twiddling our thumbs and we can get into that, but, but the mm -hmm. strategy is to wait for an invitation. And that could be an energetic invitation. It can be a physical invitation. Someone literally turning to you as the projector and asking like, Hey, Anna, what do you think about this? What could I do better? What could I shift? Um, what is your opinion on this? And as a projector, projectors are like the wise sages of the world. Um, somebody, I think it was Cynthia in our intro video, which I will link here. Um, Cynthia said that projectors are like the wise owls of, of all of the energy types. And I'm like, yes, I definitely see that you have a lot of wisdom. And the last thing that I'll give kind of in a bullet point and then let you respond is, um, Projectors can, because they have the undefined sacral center, projectors can feel emotions more so than the other energy types, projectors and reflectors. There's a lot of similarities um, and, and a lot of differences, but if you're a reflector watching this too, um, they feel energy more than, than other um, energy types. And because of that, 
you could almost like, I guess one shadow side of that could be that, um, my question to you is like, do you feel like you kind of move through the world? Have you ever felt pressure to respond in a certain way or act a certain way or be a certain way, partially because you're, you're not an energy type, right? So like the doers, the like always doing, but then also because you feel the, the, these people's energy almost more so than, than our other energy types and possibly like do you feel like sometimes you like feel these expectations of of people that you need to fill rather than just being yourself that was kind of like part a and part b um yes a thousand percent yes even though I do think that I've like learned to do a much better job especially since learning that I'm meant to rest and rejuvenate that I need a lot more time than most Mm. other energy types to put back energy back into myself and to put love back into myself after giving it out or before giving it out Mm -hmm. it's helped me to give myself that love and that grace and compassion and schedule in the time to just be alone and to Mm -hmm love myself and do what I know I need to do to rejuvenate and recharge. And Mm -hmm. sometimes I still catch myself doing this, but I, throughout my life, like mostly in my childhood, I was go, go, go. Like that's how my parents were. Schedule was booked. I woke up, got ready, went to school, went to volleyball, went to training, came home, did homework, did it all again and that's just like that was how my life was and I'll Mm -hmm. catch myself trying to do that again and now that I'm more aware of what I need and like what I know feels good for me I know that jam-packing my schedule and trying to force myself to work for six hours a day Mm -hmm. it's not gonna work like Mm -hmm. that's not for me and I feel it a lot deeper when I do try to do it definitely the last time I did it was in like May and it hit me hard it was super hard for me to wind back down and unfold into like a slower stiller lifestyle again okay it just it has helped me realize that like that rest is necessary and that connection to myself is how I connect to the world and it's how I connect to my purpose Mm -hmm. on a much deeper level and And at the same bring in energy too like that I think that's one of the important things to note about projectors is almost recognizing like the whole sentence like rest is productive like the reason it's productive for projectors is because as you are taking time to rest, then you are aligning your energy. You're kind of coming more into self, if if you want to word it that way. And as you're coming more into self, then it's like, I just imagine this like magnetic aura is just growing and strengthening around you. And that's how you are energetically opening yourself up to the invitations and people wanting to gain your like juicy wisdom and soak all of your energy up and all of, not all of your energy, but all of your wisdom up. Um, But protecting those boundaries by resting is so important because your energy just can be all, all of our energies can just be like soaked up and, and grabbed by other people. So making sure that you're creating that time for rest. I'm curious, um, Cynthia and I had this discussion because I think that sometimes at least the projectors that I've met and that I've coached in my life is, um, their reactions when they hear that they're projector and, and, and they like need rest is always like, I don't know, like, because because of that conditioning that like, first of all, we live in a generator and manifesting generator world that doer always going the masculine energy of always just being on and always producing. So the conditioning, but also, um, I think it's, it's just like not the habit of our society. So one thing Cynthia and I talked about was 
rest does not always need to mean like sleeping. So I'm curious what other ways you have found productive rest and, and what really rejuvenates you um, that you have found that you can share with other projectors that might be exploring this. Oh, okay. I mean, for me, I think my biggest one to rejuvenate myself and what finding out that I'm a projector has like helped me support myself in that way is connecting to nature. Mm. Like I need time outside, whether it's for five minutes or like three days, <laughs> I, <laughs> I need to go outside every day put my feet on the ground go on a walk and the difference between when I do that and when I don't is it is huge mm -hmm. I feel a lot less motivated if I don't do it I don't want to say lazy but like mm -hmm. I kind of feel lazy like I kind of just want to sit inside I feel drained and tired Mm -hmm. And then I get outside, I get some fresh air and it's like, I'm filled up with energy again. Mm -hmm. um, another one is, I don't know if this is for all projectors. So, um, but for me personally, and what I've heard from other projectors is that we are meant to rise with the sun and fall with the sun. Okay. So I've already been like a morning person, but connecting to myself in the morning is like, I cannot wake up at 10 o'clock mm. past that and then like try to be productive and try to energize myself. Like the mm. morning time is meant for me to sit with myself, do some meditation or breath work and move my body, journal, that's like my time to prep my mind and prep my body for the day to mm -hmm. set myself up for success. And then for bedtime, I feel like like some tea, something, something warm, something to help me relax, like an incense mm -hmm. or like some yoga. I very much have to like take time for myself and be intentional about what I'm doing and how I prep my mind for the day or for the night for mm -hmm. the next day. So mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing <laughs> those examples. Yes. That's helpful. So another aspect of all human design types is we all have this self and not self themes. Mm -hmm. um, for projectors, it's success. And the not self theme is bitterness. Can you speak on that? How that has shown up in your world? Oh my gosh. When I figured out that I was a projector and I saw the not self was bitterness, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. I mean, you got me there because <laughs> that is also what happens when I don't tend to my energy um hmm. daily I recognize that I'm very quick to snap or be annoyed or be angry or I notice like little things around the house and I'm like frustrated about all the little things and I go to work and I'm like god a customer why is there a customer I don't hmm. know because I'm at work like I just all the little things tend to like fill in my body. And even when I'm in a good place and I don't, I have a day of like, maybe my day is just not going well. And then I didn't do what I normally do to tend to my energy as in like taking some time to breathe before I go to bed or mm. taking some time to journal taking some time to like do some energy cleansing mm -hmm. I'll notice that I wake up and I don't feel as good as I would have or as I mm. normally do because I'm allowing that energy to like sit in my body mm -hmm. and I've just noticed that I'm a lot more sensitive 
to that type of thing than most people or than mm-hmm. other energy types because I'm a projector so do you feel like you hold grudges against people or or some or yeah I guess just people I feel like I have in the past yeah I don't think I do it as much anymore but Mm -hmm. at least not new grudges there are old ones that are definitely still there Mm -hmm. and I know that I should let go or would be beneficial for me to let go of but Mm -hmm. I just I haven't gotten there yet and that's okay yeah but there is definitely like tension in areas of other relationships that I feel and I feel like I tap into that energy also even if it's not mine Mm, yeah that's huge. That's huge. There, there was a client that I was working with and we were talking about human design. And when I brought up the bitterness theme or, or not self theme, we had this whole conversation around um, like invitations and then feeling bitter about that. So either if she is the one that is constantly sending out the invitations and sending out the invitations and then not getting the response, which makes sense because your strategy is to wait for an invitation. So when we go against our strategy, it doesn't always mean like, it doesn't mean that it's never going to work out or, or like there, take this with a grain of salt is what I'm trying to say. Um, (laughs) I'm trying to just to make a simple point, but when, when she was sending out invitations, like for friends to hang out or something, or to all get together for dinner, and then it wasn't working out, then she was finding herself very bitter. And we just had that conversation of like, I wonder if there's a connection there, curiously approaching the the situation um, without judgment. But I wonder if there's a connection there that that you're kind of going against your strategy, and then it's coming up in your not self theme, which is is kind of shows up often in, in my work and, and in my life as well, my not self theme is frustration. And so when I am not waiting to respond or I'm out there just really like, and I know that I'm living out of alignment, then I, I always feel very frustrated (laughs) and it always shows up for me. So it's, that's why I was like asking about the grudge thing because bitterness and holding a grudge, it doesn't mean that they go together, but I, I see Mm -hmm. potential connections there. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is one, maybe two things. One strategy, one, one like term that I've heard is for projectors, like a key word is to, um, not settle. And the idea behind this is don't settle because another invitation is going to come your way or an invitation is going to come your way. So like, if you are in a situation and you're, and you feel like you're not really getting any invitations and you're just like, okay, I'll just like settle for this situation or whatever. The invitation is to not settle the, the, that phrase is to not settle in projectors. Um, so I guess this is on the spot. So feel free to take your time because I can edit it out. Like the time that you're pausing to think, (laughs) um, But is there a situation that kind of comes to mind where you looking back, you're like, I know that I settled and I know that it did not work out as well as it could have if I would have waited for an invitation or if I would have waited to really feel that like, hell yes, like you were saying, like the not answer is also a no oftentimes. Okay. I don't think it's like a specific situation, but what came to mind and it kind of goes back to like what you're saying about not following your strategy, feeling bitter. Um, I am doing affiliate marketing. That is like what I'm trying to learn, what I'm trying to go grow with my social media to help support me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always had a hard time with when people would respond to my ads. I 
didn't know exactly how to go about it because naturally I want to be vulnerable. I want to tell you everything exactly how it is. I don't want to lie. I want to be fully honest with you and truthful. And I didn't know exactly how to do that. Mm -hmm. I was in a program. It was kind of telling you how to respond to people, Mm. which great, fine. It works out for a lot of people. It did not work out for me. Mm -hmm. Um, So like I would try and respond the way they wanted me to respond. And it just didn't feel fully authentic and honest because, you know, they're asking how much money I'm making or if I've made money or how long it took me to quit my job. And Mm -hmm. those are all things that I haven't done yet. So Mm -hmm. my natural instinct is to be like, well, you know what? Like I haven't, I haven't made money yet. I haven't quit my job yet. I know it's done this for everybody else or for other people. I chose to go the personal development route Mm. and it has helped me tremendously. That is what I wanted to say. And it's not what I said. Okay. And so I didn't really get the response that I was hoping for. I didn't get them to sign up with me. I didn't get them to join with me. I didn't get to help them Mm. um, grow their business or their mindset. So naturally it made me a little bit bitter. It made me like, why, why is this not working? I'm doing the program. I'm doing what they tell me to do. Right. They said it was easy for them. It's not easy for me. Why is this working? Mm-hmm. And then I, um, I had somebody respond or they didn't even respond to a, an ad. She just messaged me. It was a girl that I went to high school with. And Mm -hmm. she was asking how I got into social media marketing. And I was like, you know what? Here's my chance. What would I want? What would I want them to say to me if I was asking this question? Because that's also, I always tried to find something that was an online job. I just wanted to work online. I wanted to be able to have my own schedule, freedom, Mm -hmm. do what I want connect to myself when I wanted and so I was always searching and every time I asked a question I felt like everybody danced around it and I didn't want to be that person yeah and so I was like you know what let's just be honest let's be vulnerable let's how would I want to answer or how would I want someone else to answer this question if I asked it Mm -hmm. and so I just told her like I haven't made money I haven't really dove into the business side. I'm into the creating content. I'm into the personal development. And it has got me so much further in life than I thought it ever would. It's deepened my connection with myself. Mm -hmm. I know myself better than I ever have before. Mm -hmm. And being honest with her gave her the, gave me the response that I was looking for or Mm. even better than what I was looking for she told me that she'd love to work with me she said that I was very inspiring and that she loved watching my page and just Mm. all these things that I didn't expect from not giving her the answer that she maybe wanted to hear Mm -hmm. but it was the answer that was my truth and it was the answer that felt good for me to share yeah yeah thank you for sharing and that's like the beauty of just living in alignment authentically being yourself and that is such actually a really beautiful story just for all of the energy types I feel like Mm -hmm. like just for everyone when we live in alignment when we live our truth and when we share Mm -hmm. from our heart no matter what it is it doesn't even have to be business related we can equate this to relationships like when we choose to be honest when we choose to be on our authentic self then look at who we are calling in we're calling in those those people that we actually want to call in or we're calling in a new aspect or layer of a current relationship that maybe we have spent so long like dancing around eggshells and trying not to step on the broken glass and all of that so um yeah thank you for sharing that So to wrap up, is there anything else that you had kind of thought that 
man, I really, really loved this aspect of learning about being a projector. And I want to share that or any other thing that you feel like really changed your life for lack of a better word (laughs) when you learned about human design. I think this kind of builds off of that too. Mm -hmm. Um, Just knowing like looking at being a projector and seeing that success is our how we feel like we're ourselves Mm -hmm. um I was like you know like what in my head I'm like thinking success to me is reaching these big goals this big desires is that really when I'm gonna feel like myself is when I reach all those goals Mm -hmm. I don't want it to I want to feel like myself along the way to those goals I don't want to have to wait Mm. But it helps, it's helped me learn that even in that story that made me feel successful, it made me feel good. And like, you can feel successful in every single day in the little things in life, Mm -hmm. showing up for yourself, going on a walk, getting in nature makes me feel successful. being in the kitchen cooking a meal that I know is going to nourish me and make me feel good and I just enjoy being in the kitchen in the first place that makes me feel successful Mm. it's not like you have to do these big things reach these big goals you know work really hard at something to feel successful if you're doing something that feels good for you and you know is going to make you feel good Mm. that is that's what's going to make you feel successful. Yeah. I love the term, like doing what lights you up. Mm -hmm. One one thing that I love asking projectors is like in an ideal world or or in, in an ideal situation, whatever aspect of the situation we're walking through, like what would, what would light you up? What would bring warmth? Like when you think about it, what warms your heart or your stomach or, you know, like depending on where their authority is, um, Mm -hmm which you can find on your human design chart. Um, like what, what would light you up in this situation? And that is one of the ways that we can find our alignment or find our realignment when we get misaligned. And when we get misaligned and we're, that's like the, the triggers of that is for projectors is feeling bitter towards things. And then for you, like you're saying, like doing what um, lights me up ultimately I feel successful. And that's a beautiful way that we can recognize like, okay, I'm on, I'm on the path. I feel when I go to bed, I feel successful. Or when I do this, you know, and I do this thing, I feel success Mm -hmm. and defining what success means to you, because it doesn't mean like doing all of these things for projectors. And I love those little things that you've even brought up because um, I always say, and I'm not a projector, but like cooking is restful to me because I enjoy it, but it might not be restful to someone else. So again, defining what success means to you and then going out and doing those things is huge. It makes such a difference. Yes. I yeah. love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is there anything else? Um, actually, where can people find you? Let's drop your Instagram handle again, because like a lot of these guests that I've had on, um, you just share so authentically from your heart. And I don't think that we find a lot of that on social media. So it's just, it's really refreshing and you are always out in nature. And I love watching (laughs) all of your stories because you're always on a walk somewhere and that always lights me up. So tell, tell us where we can find you. Um, okay, it is McCollum.k on Instagram. So it's M C C O L L U M dot K. And then mm-hmm. I don't even oh I have TikTok, but I haven't been on there in months. I'll be back eventually, but <laughs> Instagram's my jam right now. So <laughs> Me too. I try. Yeah. I, I like show up on TikTok just to say that I'm here and then yeah. leave again. <laughs> I'm like, I like making TikToks until I start doing this. Yeah. And then I'm like that forever. I don't, right. two hours go by and I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't no. do this. <laughs> I should not be on here. Yeah, no, same. I can't, I've tried to do TikTok, but anyway, thank yeah. you so much. This is such a great conversation. I love this. Thank you for having me. Yeah.